Welcome to Media Space Members Daily. We bring you exclusive interviews from our leadership group and other professional influencers within the media, marketing, gov, tech community globally. Today I have with me David Nosak, an EU Affairs Associate at the Centre for Democracy and Technology Europe. Hi David, how are you? Good, thank you. What are the current challenges in digital sector regulations from a human rights perspective? So, in my work, I study the impact of digital services such as social media platforms and communication services on people's fundamental rights uh, and democratic principles. And all these services have dramatically changed the society for the better, but have also brought up a number of new challenges that we have never dealt with before. So, to be more specific, uh, nowadays companies are collecting immense amounts of people's data which effectively allows them to create virtual profiles of their users. And a recent report by the Joint Research Center, which is uh, the European Commission's Science and Knowledge Center, says that Facebook can predict a user's personality uh, with greater accuracy than their own spouse with only 300 likes. And this obviously raises significant privacy concerns. And so, such data is then being put into various uses. For instance, uh, recommender systems offer people highly individualized content that reflects their needs and desires. And this can be beneficial in case of online shopping, for instance, but it can get problematic uh, when people are being served disinformation or extremist content before elections. Uh, another use of these uh, data could be automated filtering tools which can work well when distinguishing uh, you know, spam messages in our email clients, but they tend to overblock people's speech when used for moderating content on social media. And uh, there's also evidence that some use of algorithmic systems uh, in, in recruitment processes, for instance, can potentially be biased against uh, people's gender or, or skin color. So these are some of the challenges I would highlight. What are the current opportunities in digital sector regulations from a human rights perspective? So the European Commission is currently preparing the Digital Services Act and uh, Digital Markets Act, which will look at the rules and responsibilities of online services in today's society. And in a sense, uh, this legislation could, could have the same global impact as the GDPR had in the field of data protection and privacy. So I believe that the Commission should take the opportunity to put uh, users and their fundamental rights uh, at the heart of these proposals in order to maintain the European, uh, European society free and democratic. And this involves, for instance, ensuring that people maintain their freedom of expression rights, bring in more transparency into companies' content moderation practices and the algorithms that they use, or empowering users with more control over the content they see online. What's your advice for the professional community in this new normal? I'd probably give uh, two pieces of advice, uh, one to the users of online services and the other one to the companies that create these services. And so to the users, I would recommend taking their rights and responsibilities online as seriously as they do in the offline world. So, you know, uh, Digital services have become an indispensable part of our daily lives, uh, and in, in many aspects, it's great. I mean, they allow us to work from home, they allow us to shop goods from anywhere around the globe, or, or even organize video interviews like this one. And we can use these services seemingly for free, but in fact, we're paying with our personal data. And uh, this shouldn't be taken lightly, you know. So uh, with every word we see on Facebook and with every picture we upload on Instagram, we should be aware who gets access to this content and how it can be potentially used further without our knowledge. And uh, parents should also, great, uh, should, should, should also pay great attention to the privacy settings that their kids have on their online services. So uh, it, it applies across generations. Um, as for the companies, I would tell them to ensure that the enforcement of their content moderation practices is transparent, unbiased, and respectful of users' rights. For instance, by employing a human review element uh, where algorithms are used. And so ultimately, this 
way we can keep our online space as fair and democratic as our offline space. Thank you, David, for some great advice there. Stay tuned for the next episode for Media Space Members Daily. In the meantime, connect with us at mediaspace.global.